Hey y'all, I promised you that I would follow up with another story about living in an apartment. This is an actual fatal story. It's not a great story, but it happened years ago, so it's okay. But I wanted to tell you because you know, so many people are so worried about, oh, you know, I'm not gonna have a place to live and I gotta go live in my car. You know, there are really dangerous situations living in apartments. And I think over time they've only gotten worse because people have, people are, some people in this world are kind of losing their minds because of what's going on. <laughs> I know it's not really laughing matter, but I can only chuckle over it because it's so absurd what's going on in our world right now. So I want you to subscribe, give me thumbs up and watch it all the way through. Okay, let's get going. And I'm going to tell you my story. It's a good story. Let's go. Hey everyone, yeah, I'm still here in my uh, hotel room. It was a gift from my children. Okay, this was years ago. This was quite a few years ago. How old would I have been? My late 30s? No, well anyways, this is about my grandmother. This was back in Ohio. My grandmother lived in an apartment. She lived on the second floor. Well, there was a fella who lived below her. And I talked to a friend of mine that, that we went to school together. And when, when I heard about it, I contacted her. And she said, well, don't you know who he is? And I said, no, I don't remember him. I think he was a year older than I was. But he was a Vietnam vet. And I guess he had some emotional problems. Yeah, from that or I don't know. Well, what happened was, was he was constantly harassing my grandmother. And I didn't find out about this till later. Well, he would come and knock on the door and he'd said that she was talking about him, that she was talking to God about him. And uh, it, 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 I guess it had escalated so high that she called her daughter and son-in-law, which would be my aunt, and uh, my aunt and uncle. Well, they were probably, they would have been in their like 50s, 50s, uh, 60s. Okay, so they came over, so they, they were freaked out over it too, and they came over to help out. So they went down, they talked to her, and then they went down, they knocked on his door and wanted to talk to him and please ask him to leave you know, my grandmother alone and not harass her. Cause I guess the landlord wasn't doing anything about it. Okay. Well, he bought a gun that day. And basically my grandmother was upstairs in the apartment and all of a sudden she heard gunshots. Um, he literally just killed my aunt and uncle right there. Yeah. And then he started shooting up at the ceiling and then he shot himself. This was in an apartment building. This was an apartment situation. People get killed. I talked to yesterday about how I almost got killed. I almost died because they did, um, the maintenance man or the, the whatever you might want to call him. I don't think he's really a maintenance man, but he was a remodeler and he turned off my gas by mistake and didn't let me know. And then he turned it back on so that, um, the, the pot, but the pilot wasn't on. And so I almost got gassed. I was sick for a good week and a half, two weeks. And I was starting to go downhill and I didn't know what was wrong until I realized that, well, you'll have to look at yesterday's video. I'm not gonna go through it again. So, you know, it can be dangerous living in an apartment building. That's, you know, it's not the end all. And, I'm and 
A lot of you are going to say, oh, my apartment building is great. Of course they are. They're not all going to be dangerous. But there are dangerous situations going on out there. Um, you, get a, you get a bad neighbor. And it, it's hell. Yeah. And your whole life turns upside down. Which is one reason why I love being a nomad. I love the van life. Because if I'm parked next to somebody... And let's say they're smoking a cigarette or they got the boom box, they start the music or whatever. I just move. But if I was in an apartment and somebody was standing outside of my door um, smoking, I'm stuck. I really am stuck. And if you'd say anything, people get so offended if you say anything to them. They'd say, well, I have every right to smoke outside if I want to, right? Um, yeah, well, but me living in a vehicle, I get to move. I can move whenever I want to. One thing that I did notice is watching shorts or the reels, you know, the things that you keep scrolling, you know, that little rabbit hole you can get caught up into. Well, there, I every once in a while, a video comes through where the police knock on, they, they raid the wrong house. And I remember the last one I watched, I'm not, and, and some, somebody almost got hurt. I mean, people are like, who are you? Why are you kind of, they break down the door. They come in, they say they have, they find out, they almost like, they almost like have guns on the pe poor people in the house. Pattern of wrong raids, leaving parents and children traumatized. He and a team of officers with handguns and an assault rifle raided the home of an innocent family. It's tore it upside down. While being questioned for a lawsuit filed by the family, Capello and other officers give a deeply disturbing look into how little police work they actually did before raiding this home. And here to find out they got the wrong house. And I was thinking the other day, I was thinking, wow, you know, um, that, would, that wouldn't happen to me. Although things can happen. You can get stopped. Um, when I was in El Paso that one time, I got stopped. And he wanted to basically, he thought I was... I'll never go through past so again. And that, that's a whole nother video also. But <laughs> I did write about it. I'm writing a book. I did write about it. I, I had to get that out of the way. That really, and it was like bringing up PTSD because I was so freaked out over it. But yeah, you can get pulled over. And people think, well, why Why do you have all that stuff in your in your, in your your car, you know, in your van? Um, well, we live in it. But the the... The border patrol that pulled me over, never heard of van life, didn't know a thing about it. He was young, gung-ho young, and I thought he was going to um, confiscate my car. That he thought maybe I was a drug runner or whatever. I'll never, I'm, in fact, I actually, I avoid Texas. Sorry, all you Texans. Yeah, but it just, it, it makes me nervous going through Texas now. Um, if I do go through it, I'll go through like the top part of it. But I won't, I, if at all possible, I never want to go through El Paso ever again. Um, but yeah, those things can happen. Or somebody can smash into your car. Just recently somebody mentioned that she gave, wanted to give me an update. And she goes, I just got my van. And she goes, and somebody came plowing in behind me going 45 and didn't stop. You know, maybe the brake's not working or something like that. So things can go, ha things can go wrong. You know, still being in a minivan or in a van. In van life, things can go wrong. But boy, they can really go wrong. I live in an apartment too. People think you're, people think they're so safe in their house. They think they're so safe in their apartment. It's not always the case. That's not, that's not going to save you. And I just wanted to mention that. I promised that I would tell you that story. Yeah, pretty scary.
Thanks for listening to my apartment stories. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a billion of them out there. People dial the time living in an apartment and house. That's that's no um, safety net anymore either. So, okay. Well, I will see you tomorrow or the next day, whichever. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for spending some time with me. Love you guys. Mwah. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And I got the book, How to Live in a Minivan, The Minivan Leeway. Okay?